James Al McCune is an actor turned independent content creator who hosts a show called Gray Area, where he takes an objective dissection of very niche issues, which result in spotlighting a bigger issue at hand. It is the amalgamation of years of not respecting his position. This show, recorded in a documented fashion, releases his raw rationalizations as to show that he doesn't have all the answers. Conflicted about everything. <laughs> but in the process of seeing the confliction, spectating that he thinks the best of people. Because I feel like there is a good dude in there somewhere. I really believe that it's, he's capable. Birth the concept of gray area, showing how important it is to dissect every side of the story to be objective. Casually looking at some of the stuff that he does online, which you can't do by the way, because he's completely wiped his Twitter and Instagram accounts. To figure out the roots of why something occurred. It's not anyone else's to tell me what I should do, how I should do it, and what tone I should use when doing it. And how it's important to ask questions. Do you feel like you have a responsibility to be a good influence on your audience? To reveal a bigger picture that may lead to healthy conversations. On the internet and with my platform is to kind of help people have a more open mind about discussing stuff instead of just like hearing a headline and being like, that sucks. Which may in turn improve the lives of the people by being aware of a specific situation. But like, what do we do? To, I like, think just even educating yourself was doing a lot more than most people have. Currently, there were three episodes available, each touching on different issues at hand. The first episode was about how Mike Boudet ruined his podcast called Sword and Scale, and dissects it in a very objective way. This dude didn't do stuff really far in the past. He has been consistently and constantly doing stuff for the last, like, two, three years. After that, James did a follow-up called Feck. Let's address some of the uh, wonderful notes that you guys had for me on the first episode of Great Area. Most recently was episode two, which followed Gus Johnson, a YouTuber who mostly does sketch comedy. I need a little more time on the Avatar 2 sequel. Oh, no, no. And related to the overarching topic of happiness. I think that you love things in retrospect and you enjoy things in the moment. Episode one's trailer intrigued me and is what compelled me to watch this hour long episode. Lengthy chronicle of all of the things that he has done to be a to the public. Oh, that's terrible. Why would you say that? In the episode, the overarching aspect covered the question, Is this a joke? And includes interesting conversations with several people with different backgrounds. Even to the point where James literally talks to comedians since Mike made a joke that started the backlash. I'm not sorry for telling jokes. Because of this, a lot of moral conversation sparked. Is hurting people emotionally enough to take away him and his employees' jobs, because he's not physically hurting people. Giving you a hard look and consideration on jokes in general. Do you think jokes are exempt from criticism? Not criticism. Everyone's touching on both sides. Everyone's feelings are getting hurt at once. We see genuine reactions from everyone. He called me. Hello? Hi, is this Mike? Yeah. I recorded it. <laughs> Jamie. I told him. I told him I was recording it. Especially James, when we see him interviewing the people involved in the situation. And he found a good picture to post, and he posted it on Twitter, uh, and then he told his fans I should die. What? And then cuts to a clip of him after the interview addressing his thoughts. It was just sort of stressed about the importance of the social conversation around this. Feelings? In talking to him, there's a sense of empathy that I, I can't help but feel for him. And throughout this whole process, I've just kind of been wrestling with like, he's a real dude. He is suffering, even if it is his own fault. I'm worried about him. And regrets about that specific instance. I should have filmed my approach into the interview. Towards the end, you notice a message of him wishing more people would be kinder in the world. I don't want to be so callous because I think that there is a big problem on the internet with people really going in on folks. I think we need to be kinder in general. And I think people not being kind is kind of what pushes him to be unkind. Which made me sympathize for him. The follow-up was Feck, a recap of episode one. That also involves sitting down with women to talk about women's experience online. Every guy I talk to about this says, oh, I don't do that. But somebody's lying because every female I've talked to has had these experiences. Addressing some criticisms from the first episode. Text message Mike sent me earlier this week where he said, you didn't try to help me, James. You tried to make a hit piece on me and get famous from it, requesting that I don't speak about somebody in his life, which I wasn't planning to do in the first place because I don't care about your personal life, Mike, as long as you're not hurting anybody. Some comedic bits with Eddie. Gray Area, his show was posted and there's some conflicting opinions about it. So we're gonna talk to him and get, have him clarify those. I don't wanna say fact, dude. Like, not again, dude, we already got, you just cut it in. As well as mostly a conversation with him. I explicitly say that a lot and it's just incorrect. The real reason is for what Mike has said and done publicly. 
I mean, yeah. And fact-checking by interjecting with him sitting down in front of a camera. The thing that I said almost sounded to some people like I was implying all women are victims and that's why they listen to true crime. That's not the case. I think what I was attempting to say was that it's maybe easier for women to empathize with these stories because it's more often the case that these stories have women as victims. Although there were some sarcastic parts that involved Eddie. Did you leave the bit in the video where you said to me, Eddie, I'm gonna purposely ruin Mike Bidet's life? <laughs> No, I should have left that in though. Yeah, it would have made things been. a lot clearer. For the most part, it was a serious video that was a message directly to Mike. The thing about how you acted after the show went up, Mike, is that you proved everyone who is against you right. And shows how invested James was to the whole Mike situation. I'm frustrated that you took my willingness to give you a chance and just stepped on it. You're gonna walk away from this acting like I did something wrong to you when I spent a lot of time and effort making sure that I was representing you as fairly as possible. At the end, James addresses us directly to not send hate towards Mike. Please do not go after Mike. Do not go after anyone in general. I think it's a really bad thing to do. Despite all that we've seen. And gives us a glance as to how much he cares about his audience. At the end of the day, this is all unimportant. Just figure out who you are, figure out how to love yourself. Episode two was a casual analysis of Gus Johnson and his perspective on happiness. I think that was the happiest I ever was because I was making videos and I had just enough money to get by to last me for four months and there were really no obligations that I had. Which ended up being more impactful due to the experience that James was going through at the time. Trying to like figure out how I get happy because I don't know. <laughs> that's the thing that's like bugging me about adulthood is that like as a kid I had a lot of stuff that was kind of like fun. It was easy to turn my brain off. I don't do that anymore. Hopefully other people can help me. Since Jamie was feeling sad because of some personal stuff he was dealing with, he decided to hang around town with some friends and have deep conversations that covered real topics relating to happiness. In pursuit of being happy, I have, I think, made myself a more consistently unhappy person. <laughs> yeah. Showed some flaws of both Gus and Jamie. My family has a history of like addiction and some alcoholism spots here and there. So I'm like, I recognize that I am also an addictive person. Shared stories. We would go down into the middle of the woods in our hunting shack. There's no electricity. We would make up poker games and play $5 tournaments. Ended up running into a few fans. Oh, thanks, dude. What's your name? Colin. Colin, can we man? and near the end help some people out. Out of all of the episodes, episode two showed more of an entertainment-based style and helped me realize that the show Gray Area in general has a lot of aspects relating to entertainment. This is farmer's market. You can buy farmers. You can market them. God, that's bad. It's all right, it's all right. We'll get there, we'll get there, it's okay. I found it entertaining due to its casual feel, which led to some comedy bits that were quite natural. Do we need the lighter? No. It's very bright. How's the white balance on that? <laughs> it was very self-aware. Eddie, come on out here. This is Eddie Burback. I thought we were gonna do this episode where you're hanging out with me. Why would you think that if you didn't give me any information about it? You're my happy place, Eddie. Okay. Breaking the fourth wall many a time. Were you guys recording? Yeah. Okay, did I seem too mean? <laughs> <laughs> Which didn't make it boring. Relating to the second episode, it actually made me emotional due to the combination of the subject matter. Love is, is something that needs maturity. Relatability. Look back with love on people, places, and times. And pacing that was spoken to specific B-roll that subtly related to the current conversation. I love that person. I love this thing. I loved that time. Overall, partially because of how much entertainment value was involved. I found the, this is my mom. Wait! Give it a minute. I'm talking about being happy! It didn't feel like I spent an hour watching it. Another value that was present was one of production. The production value presented how much work went into each episode on numerous occasions. Not only does James use B-roll slash visual references to show an example of what he's talking about, similar to somebody else, you know, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> Which keeps it visually interesting, but credits the person directly on screen whenever it shows up. Regarding visual interest, James shoots in different settings on a regular basis. Add skits to prove a point. Mike Bidet Theater. I actually am single and I complimented you on a completely different podcast page. Doesn't that count? Are you hot and easy? Cause that counts more. Would you feel like that was an appropriate time or a way to do that? Fact checks interviewees claim since it's an interview heavy show. Has a custom intro per episode to touch 
touch on bullet points of those specific episodes, includes a really stylized animated intro, which while editing this now, I just now realize how metaphorical this intro scene is to the actual show, and sometimes does an edit where he plays the next clip while the previous clip is still playing, and vice versa. I have completely run out of stuff. I'm gonna talk to you at the same time. A couple years back, I ran into what is arguably one of the most popular True Crime podcast. While entertainment and production value is showcased in the show, the main portion of it is documentation. You were approaching it as, I am a person on the internet, I am someone who can observe this, so I'm gonna condense this information for all of you so you don't have to search for it anywhere. Which explains the runtime. Instead of making documentaries about big controversial YouTubers like Jake Paul, James glances at smaller niches and dissects those instead. I ran into what is arguably one of the most popular true crime podcasts. Which makes for a more interesting video. Honestly, this feels a little bit like an inquisition. Are you, t are you talking about how I'm interviewing you or just the general situation? <laughs> Yeah, to be quite honest, yeah. To be quite honest, it does. Since no other public figure has really gone to the lengths that James has when it came to that specific topic. I decided to reach out to him and the people who have been pointing fingers at him, and mm. I have heard back from Aaron Mankey, and he said he wants nothing to do with it. It's based on real issues. If you're gonna speak about the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone, you need to understand that that comes from a really upsetting place, and that they deserve respect for the situation, and that there just needs to be a little bit of sensitivity about it. Is objected by listening to both sides in a fair manner. It's not fair to just go against somebody without them sort of having something to say about it. And it's most of the time recorded with a handheld style camera. Since the point of the documentation is to be objective. You also reached out for Mike and let him defend himself. That's way too fair. Make conclusions by recording his thoughts from start to finish. I started this video as sort of a hit piece. It's controversial and I don't agree with a lot of his stuff. I feel some sort of connection to him as a person. And I've been wrestling with, am I a bad person? And jumping in with the mentality of learning as he goes. They're saying, I want to be cared about. Mike is going out there and saying, I don't care about you. And that's what's people off. And includes various people of different backgrounds to either prove a point he's trying to figure out. His main defense was, it's just a joke. Or just to get a second opinion slash perspective. There are always going to be people who don't forgive you. And forgiveness is very powerful. And if you choose to give that, it's a beautiful gift. Especially with the ones who are directly slash indirectly involved with the situation. The people you're hurting are supposed to adapt to you? You think people aren't hurting, hurting me back? One of the things that I like about James Allen McCune's videos is like his rawness. It's just, it's, it's really cool because it has that documentary feel because he's like going out on the field doing the stuff. Like you see him rationalize literally everything in front of the camera. But the thing is like, he also has editing in it. So it's not just one long cut. Like it's cut so that way it flows and it works and it's really good. Well, I, I think it's an interesting video dynamic. I think yeah. with documentary series, you don't see a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. The only thing that I can think of is Shane Dawson, but even then, that's a different. That's a different style of. That's a different style of documentary. It is. Yeah. yeah that's more of an expose than anything. James is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I like it. I think it's a great addition to the internet. He does it in a way where it's like you see him. <laughs> struggle in the moment with the camera and I love that I love the realness I love how he's directly like look man I'm trying to be objective here but it's very very difficult yeah you get you to know? see like the yeah. the process of him uh, mentally going through everything exactly yeah like talking to people about it live as well exactly yeah I just love how how he tries his hardest to be objective and like you can also see in his rawness with the interviews he tries so hard to ask the right questions and not step on any toes but in the process he does step on some toes but then he like gently like he knows where his boundaries are mm -hmm. and then and then after that he talks about it like i know what i did wrong here i love it as a whole rawness anything else with the rawness? Is that I'm, it? Trying to th I'm trying to think what else well it would be best if i were like standing over there and i could yeah. do like the thing he does where he pans yeah. over and just like that like they do that in the show too yeah know? they're just, just like, like pan like, over yeah. to the other people just, over there oh that's the other thing with the rawness is the the natural comedic bits and the banter between like him and like his friends. That's what I like. Like I, I just love all everything, everybody that he has on. I love Gus Johnson, Eddie, you know. <laughs> I was doing the yes thing, but it, did not, <laughs> it didn't look good at all. <laughs> And that's a perfect example. It's bits like that. Bits like that, exactly, exactly. How are you gonna cut this? <laughs> You'll find out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna cut it exactly like the show too. So it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be cool. Oh, it's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs>
throughout the entirety of the show, we spectate James being a very analytical guy. When you have this much attention and money and exposure, you can do a lot of very disturbing things with that. And if you're manipulating people in public, who knows what happens in private? Spectating the process of his logic and his reasoning skills based on the topic at hand. Nobody fired you because you said the C word. They fired you because you are taking your platform and you are abusing it. In his journeys, James highlights specific people to spotlight a bigger issue at stake. Because that sounds like a choice almost more than a feeling. I wonder almost if I am happy, but if I look in and try to decide if I'm not happy, then, then it would mean that I'm thinking I might not be happy and just wreck it. And isn't afraid to look like an idiot in the process. It just goes to voicemail. Did it. <laughs> Help. Even with the great amount of research involved both on camera and in editing, and how carefully he attempts to interview people. Have you ever gotten yourself checked out or like met with therapists to see where you stand? It's nobody's business. And that is personal, I don't mean to pry. No, and that's fine. I, I, I can understand why you're asking the question. He never once acts like he has all the answers. But it's not my place to decide where his morals should be. Not my responsibility where he goes from here. It makes known that he hopes more people are open-minded about discussions. I want to encourage people to talk more. Have discussions. Be more reasonable with the way that you're handling your feelings. Process those things. I was in the mud for a very long time on this, and now that... I'm out, it feels good. Which gives a good hint that James is a good guy who wants the best for people. I want to believe that the world can be a good place and that people can redeem themselves and they can find ways to become better people. Gray Area is the best documentary series on YouTube due to its appreciated objectivity, entertainment that involves comedy, self-awareness, and emotion, high production value in research and editing, documentation from start to finish that has real reactions and deep discussions, the rawness of Jamie's thought processes, conflictions, and conclusions, and spectating James in the process of everything, which shows that he's a good man who wants more healthy discussions in the world. The lengths he went for every aspect of his projects are very much appreciated, despite the people who may disagree with him. In the end, James did the right thing by giving them more than a fair chance to expose themselves, either positively or negatively. Special thanks to the four patrons who support me on Patreon. If you would also like to help out the channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash or click the link in the description.